Good morning. It is good to see you today. I hope you're doing well. I want to talk about the church today. A lot, a lot of times folks think that they can be a part of the church um, in the universal sense, but that they do not have to be a part of the church uh, on a local level. Namely, they don't have to be a member of the Lord's church and, and worship with the saints. The Lord uses the word that is commonly translated as church a couple times in Scripture, in the Gospels. In his ministry, he refers to the church numerous other times, calling it by a different name. But I want you to think about the first time is in Matthew chapter 16 when the Lord tells Peter, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The second death will not affect the Lord's church, is what we understand. And people like that idea. Right? They like that idea, but they still think they don't have to be a part of the church on a local level. The second time the Lord uses the word is in Matthew chapter 18 when he's talking about if your brother sins against you, that you go to him privately and you, if he hears you, he says you have gained your brother in Matthew chapter 18. If he doesn't hear, you take one or two others. And if he doesn't hear them, at verse 17, he then says, and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Now, how do you do that without, how are you a part of that process without that being on a local level? Right? You have to be. You cannot be, you cannot be in the church universal without being in the church local. If you are in one, then you are in the other. When folks think that they do not have to be a part of the local church, to be a part of the universal church, if you will. What they're really showing is they want no accountability. You might read these other verses in Matthew 18, directly around the verses we read. What they're saying is they really don't want any accountability. They really don't want to help anyone else. They are not their brother's keeper. They don't want to help anyone else, and they do not want anyone else to help them. They want to be left alone. That is not the church. Right? But that's what they're saying that they want. They don't want anyone to help them. Okay, What they're saying is they want to, to look at verse 17 again, they want to live their lives like a heathen. Right? How did the Jews treat heathens and tax collectors? They left them alone. That's what these folks are saying. When they do not want to be a part of the local church, they want to live their lives like a heathen. What they are saying is, and you might consider verse 18 when he says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. They do not want the Father's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. They are not interested in that. If they were, they would come when the Lord calls. And that's the thing. They are not interested in gathering together, if you will. They are not interested in that. Verse 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. They are not interested in being in the midst of the brethren. Earlier in the chapter, you might remember um, verse 3, he calls, he calls a child and he sets the child in the midst of them. When folks don't want to be a part of the local church, they aren't interested in coming when the Lord calls. And friend, that is what the church is on a local level and on the universal level. You can't be in one without being in the other. Hope you enjoyed this study today. God bless you. Be a blessing to others. We'll see you tomorrow morning.